ladles and jelly spoons, boys and girls. Welcome to the 10K Collective Podcast, the place for six, seven and eight figure sellers to grow their business profits and indeed create a seven figure asset they can sell if they want to part of the amazing FBA family of podcasts. Today, we are warmly welcoming Ritis uh, Loris of Omnisend. Ritis is the co-founder and CEO of Omnisend and Omnisend is an omni-channel marketing automation platform tailored for e-commerce. Welcome to the show, Ritis. Hi, Michael. Thanks for inviting. Pleasure to be here. Pleasure. Now, we're actually streaming live to uh, Facebook as we talk, and uh, Facebook was down yesterday. And as you were saying, a very good reminder that we want to be omni-channel because sometimes a single channel that seems like it's kind of part of the the earth or the foundations of the world just goes offline as Facebook did. And of course, therefore, WhatsApp, Instagram, and what else is linked with Facebook? Something else went down. Yeah, yesterday. those those three major services. Yeah. And no, we saw but we saw actually a lot of our customers being like very adaptable and we are super happy to see that. And they start sending campaigns related to Facebook being down, SMS campaigns and email campaigns and inviting, okay, Facebook is down, but we are still here. Mm-hmm. So uh, go and shop and this is a special Facebook down down offer whatever <laughs> discount so really being i like it a facebook down discount I, I kind of wish i thought of that it did occur to me to do something about it and i just thought well it's kind of i don't know it's a bit of a cheap cheap shot but you know maybe maybe there's no such thing as a cheap shot in marketing if it works um, <laughs> so if it, does, if it does you have you have plenty of time to do something because you save you know the statistics show that people are spending so much time in social media and social networks so if yeah. facebook is a primer instagram let's say is a primary network where you will spend or waste your time. So you have plenty of time apparently. So you can spend this time purchasing or exploring uh, your the brands of interest, let's say. I like it. So that's for those who are omnichannel marketers, then there are many upsides. So let's get into the main meat of today's show. We're going to talk about the iOS 15 update, which sounds incredibly specific, but I think it's probably quite of interest to those who would do any kind of marketing that isn't strictly just selling on Amazon. And by the way, guys, it's 2021. If you are listening and you're selling on Amazon and you do no off Amazon marketing at all, I really think it's time you change that because Amazon as a channel isn't necessarily going to get suspended like Facebook was yesterday, but they could suspend you anytime. And I think having your own email marketing list or anything along those lines is going to be the starting point of giving yourself that that security and many many upsides we're not going to talk about that today but if you're not selling on uh, if you're selling on amazon and you're not marketing off amazon you should um i'm just going to say that so i think this is relevant to all e-commerce sellers personally now um first thing to say then what is the ios update so ios um is the uh, iphone um operating system is that right yeah. tell us more what, what are we actually talking yeah, about Ap- today? apple yeah apple operating system and those kind of like I, I would maybe even separate those topics a little bit so it's uh, ios 15 update which is relevant for anyone who is doing retention marketing email marketing specifically because it's going to skew your uh open metrics which is still one of, one of the most important metrics which is being tracked by by the marketers and the sep- second topic is uh, is amazon uh, attribution uh, quite a new thing, which we released uh, late this summer, and uh, and uh, referral uh, brand referral bon- bonus program. So those those two topics, which which are kind of like related, but but a little bit separate. So if we could start maybe with iOS 15 update, which is relevant for anyone who is selling online and who are owning their email list. Doesn't matter where do you sell you on your own own store on Amazon, etc. But if you are owning your email list, that's going to make an impact. So. And just maybe for those for whom it's a, it's a new thing, so just a short intro to this. So Amazon, uh, like officially announced the release of iOS 15 operating system or for app like phones, tablets, and even uh, their laptops. So all of them are running on the uh, iOS 15 currently, or this is being released now. So they started this release uh, 20th of September, it's be, and it's being gradually released. So what does that mean for the marketers mainly? Be, like There are two main changes which happening with this iOS 15 rollout. First one is being called mail uh, privacy, uh, mail privacy settings. So now by default i mean it's not a default but there, there is a pop-up form which really uh, invites you to opt into to this new mail privacy and it's just such a straightforward and the wording is so um so worrying and so scaring that i have no doubts 95 percent or maybe 99 per- per- percent of of all the users apple users will be opting in and it's going to change two things first one 
all the opens will be tracked immediately. So the only technical uh, way how all email service providers are tracking your email open is by opening the image, one pixel, which is not visible uh, visible for your uh, readers and for yourself. So that's how it's being uh, being tracked. So uh, now Apple Mail client will be upload, like downloading all the images upon the receiver. So immediately. So basically all your subscribers who are using Apple email as an email client uh, will be recorded as opened email just immediately upon the receiving it. So definitely it's not the right, the right metric. And uh, uh, yeah, so we have this internal joke that for the marketers who are working for a large organization, it could be good because you're going to prove, okay, I, I have improved my metrics a lot, but that's going to be fake metrics. Right. Uh, yeah, that's that's the first change. And the second change is, is geolocation due to exactly the same technical uh, change. Basically, you will not be able uh, to track where uh, those people who are opening your emails uh, actually are. So it's, a, it's one of the things which was becoming more and more popular. So uh, geotargeting by 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 the by the state by the by the country the location of your customers as e-commerce is basically becoming more and more global uh, so it's not will not be available how much of impact that's a question which i usually get from um from customers so i offer like from industry so uh According to Litmus data, which is called like really reliable source, uh, they say that in, in countries like United States, the UK, Australia, um, Canada, like Apple mail penetration is around 50%. According to our data, it's a bit lower among our customer base. It's around 38, 39%. So let's say 40 around it. Uh, so it's a bit lower, but still it's a significant impact. So definitely it will make an impact for anyone who's sending emails so that your open rates will just become better. Uh, which is not true. People were not really <laughs> reading those emails. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. So I, I, I didn't quite understand the thing about pixels, but I mean, broadly speaking, it sounds like, um, you know, th they are going to show everything as opened on, on that operating yep. system. Yep. And, and that's not true. So um, obviously, then that means um, open rates are going to be rubbish for, for email. Is there other before we plunge into email, I suppose we ought to just check is it relevant for any other types of marketing or that affects any other channels of marketing as well? No. No, it should not. Yeah. So it's just basically email. Okay. Well, that yep, makes sense. That's great. Um, as a user of Apple Mail myself, I think uh, I will be, you know, probably I naturally check every box that says, please don't market anything to me. So, <laughs> or track me because I, I work at internet marketing. So every time I open YouTube, I get somebody advertising Amazon training at me like every single time. And it gets a bit wearing after a while, particularly because most of it's terrible. Uh, but, um, anyway, so I can see why this is going to be widely adopted. So what, how do we deal with this? Obviously, if our open rate statistics are rubbish, is there a hack? Is there a workaround or, or what's the right mm -hmm. response to that? Yeah, so what I would suggest really to focusing more for all the marketers on conversion metrics. So starting as a clicks as a primary metric and, and then uh, actually purchases and uh, website behavior as well. So those are kind of the, the things which you, should be could could and should be uh, tracking now and then making those uh, your primary metrics uh, over over to opens uh, still like you you can segment and probably that's that's probably okay just one by one so initially what I would suggest doing is really to to segment so to segment out those of your readers and those of your subscribers who are using Apple Mail and those who are outside Apple Mail. So outside Apple Mail, there will be legit opens and you can still like, you know, rely on this metric and uh, have all your practices there. Uh, so it's a bit of more work. So that's a first step, which we would advise first. Second step, what, uh, yeah. I was going to say that's, that sounds like an excellent step. I'm sorry to interrupt, but I just want to know how do we do that? Because obviously that sounds really important. It makes total sense to me. Yeah, so it really depends on your email service provider. In case of Omnisend, we have a pre-built segments for, for our customers and, uh, and we are able as email service provider to identify what uh, client is being used. So I have no doubt that... Uh, more or less all email service provider, like modern email service provider globally, they have prepared for that. And uh, if not, so that's what you should be requiring from your ESP um, to identify what uh, email client your, your reader is being uh, 
used by your readers and then make segments based on that. Okay, perfect. So you got email client. So we need to go through and select um, anything that isn't Apple as an email client. Is there any yep. other sort of words for it? So it's iOS, Apple. Is there any other words that we would be looking for that are sort of red flags? Uh, that's probably kind of the from kind of uh, way more technical identification. It's like a uh, client, but that should not be shown in your in your report list in your dashboard. Yeah, so Apple, uh, Apple Mail, that's probably the primary, or yeah. iOS could be the secondary. But Apple Mail, that's the main keyword. Okay, perfect. Thank you for that. Okay, so if we segment those out then. Um, so you were going to say there was a second response. So. Yeah. So the second, the second, like respond to prepare for that. What we would really suggest to clean up your list. So one of the challenges which this current change will, is bringing, not will, but is already bringing to the marketers is really that uh, the the list hygiene is extremely important. So basically, removing your old contacts uh, is important. So uh, up uh, until today, it was mainly based on uh, open activities yeah so the good practice is that let's say you are cleaning up the contacts which in the past 12 months have never opened any of your email because the all contacts can ruin your online reputation and they still marketers sometimes think that this is my asset that they build a mailing list of 100,000 subscribers throughout 10 years. But if let's say 70,000 of those have never read my any single email in the past 12 months, they are dead contacts. You will never be able to to, uh, to reactivate them or so. That's what our practice shows. Okay, you can reactivate up to two, 3% at most. Uh, so the numbers are really low. So that's, that's what is very important. So still, once you have open data, what we would suggest really to clean up your list and to get rid of inactive uh, contacts. Those who have never opened any single email in the past 12 months. So that's the second thing which we would advise uh, to do. Uh, third thing is really start thinking more and rely more on clicks is a primary metric and other metrics, as I mentioned already. So conversional metrics, mainly clicks, uh, purchases and website behavior. So let's say to give you an example, if Michael is, is visiting your website and browsing and that's what you are capable to track and register. So definitely it's highly likely that Michael still is okay receiving uh, uh, your communication because he's a still an active customer and he shows engagement with your brand, with your online store. Uh, but if uh, if we have not seen Michael clicking, visiting, or purchasing again in the past 12 months, highly likely that Michael is not active anymore. So that's 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 another thing. So basically, augment and start focusing on other other main metrics as clicks, uh, purchasing uh, data, and website behavior. So that's three metrics replacing one open metric. Amazing. Thank you. Very practical response. So segmenting by email client if that's the right word uh yep. cleaning up your list and then changing the metrics and it strikes me also i, I don't know i'd be interested in your thoughts on this as a, an email marketing expert i always thought that open rates only tell me whether my subject line and first line are, are good anyway i mean apart from that i think they're meaningless because it doesn't really matter if everyone opens my email if nobody clicks anyway i suppose except they're reading i suppose it shows some kind of engagement i mean what do you think the meaning of open rates was anyway and does it really matter that it's gone away Michael, you are absolutely right. And if you had, if you would ask any marketer, everybody would admit and said, yeah, yeah, so that's true. But like to be fully transparent and fully honest to ourselves, I mean, ourselves, I call all the marketers, opens were still very important and always, always tracked metrics. And we see from our reports usage, so uh, open rates was the primary metric, which was always used. And the breakdown of our met metrics was used way, way, uh, uh, like less so um so you're right uh yes it didn't show much even now or in the past already so not a significant change by by this mean but the habitual change is still quite significant as marketers we're tracking this as a fundamental primary metric look but it's very similar to uh once we talk about websites uh so Visits to websites, it's what we actually are tracking. Although visits, purely they don't tell you anything. 
So way more important. So what is the conversion rate? What uh, what conversions are you are you tracking? What is engagement? What is the bounce metrics and all those things? So if you have like huge traffic, but they are just bouncing after two seconds, it doesn't mean anything. But still, visits as a fundamental primary metric is being tracked, is being shared, is being celebrated. So the same with opens in email. Yeah, interesting. So it sounds like it's more of a mindset. It's forcing a mindset shift for marketers than it is really going to damage Correct. everything. Correct. It's not, it, it's, it's, it's not, yeah, I'm sorry, just it's not yeah, going to damage. So that's probably very important to emphasize this to our listeners. Mm. It, because of this IRS 15 change, the only metric opens will change because it will be skewed. The effectiveness of email will not be skewed at all. So email will remain as effective as it is, it is now because nothing fundamentally uh, will not change. Just your ability to think, and yeah, as you named it right, the, the mindset shift will have to happen in a lot of marketers' heads. Yeah, interesting. And uh, the other thing that strikes me is this. That obviously, the, the main thing I want to know if I send something some, to somebody is, um, have they opened it? Of course. Are they actually seeing the, the, the message? And I have lots of fun A-B testing my uh, subject lines. So that's going to be a bit of a mess for the Apple people. But the other thing I want to know is, do they click? And I can measure that with any normal ESP email service provider. Uh, but the thing I can't see is whether they're reading because <laughs> I don't get any metrics about that now. Now, one thing I've seen some marketers do is send a pretty short sort of, you know, one paragraph about something and then to read more, click here. Is that going to be a solution that, that we can use as a sort of metric halfway between the open rate and the click with some form of engagement, but not necessarily? That's you know, correct. Very good is, advice. Is that good practice? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So to what you said, like a couple of, again, the very actionable tips here. So first one, uh, you're right. Uh, A-B testing uh, of subject lines and sender name. Uh, those two uh, were based on opens, yeah? Subject lines and, and, and the sender's name. So, so what we would recommend to do is really to run, as we know, okay, it will be like half or 60% still outside Apple Mail. So basically take this segment, run A-B test for a subject line, and then the, the winner let, let the entire mailing list receive the winning subject line. So that's the advice. Second, I completely agree to what you just said. And the third is really start A-B testing more of the content itself. And to what you said, yeah, so uh, have this, you know, below the, the, the fold or something and call to action buttons and then like less text. If, if, if you're sending, um, and there are two kinds of emails. One is, is really like more informational when you are sending uh, useful information. So instead of placing the entire paragraph or entire text, yeah, basically uh, make a sneak peek, uh, catchy headlines and all those things and read more, which is... Uh, then uh, linking to your landing page or to your website, to your blog. And, and the second uh, kind of emails are more promotional than if you're selling online and if you are e-commerce brand, you are usually sending like images, which are really kind of like the call to action is purchase now or, you know, uh, it's not that much of a extra exploration or extra text which is happening on your website but again you can be creative and you can you can use badges okay find out special offer on our website uh find out more there is there is a bit better offers in our website etc so kind of find be creative and find all the ways to really make uh, your readers to click on call to action buttons yeah i mean for me i think that um what matt is isn't <laughs> Open rates were always kind of fool's gold anyway, because like it kind of you can feel better about yourself by using it. But as you said, if somebody's reading but never actually engages with your blog, that's not a great sign that they actually care. And sooner or later, um, I would want to see clicks coming from uh, like the world. The, it's funny, isn't it? The email and and um, web pages they kind of feel so incredibly nineteen nineties now, but they still come down to clicks and moving by click from one page to another, right? And in a way, I suppose an email is just a page on a browser for quite a lot of people, right? It's just another web page. So um, obviously if you're on Apple Mail, then it's a separate app, but I guess it's clicking from one thing to another, right? And I think that for me, I just want to get that click. I mean, I, is that is that wrong thinking or is there something a bit more refined we can take out of this? Yeah, this is this is the right thinking. I, I, I do agree, I do agree. Although, although still the... Um... The, the how to say it again depends on on the on the communication you are doing but like like 
click to open ratio is still rather low. So it's like four or five times usually lower. So you have to extrapolate. So if you get 5% of clicks, highly likely you have 20% of opens. And, uh, and why is it so? Because not every level of your campaign is really being highly engaged because you cannot like uh, hit right to the target with any communication in every piece of email which you are sending. So here for Michael, let's say there is a brand X, uh, which Michael is a fan of brand X and Michael is reading their emails, but not every time he's really interested in the content so much that he would click on the call to action button and continue exploration. But, uh, and maybe he clicks on every third on every fifth email, which is great. Still, it's, it's very good. Yeah, but you should not be expecting like everyone clicking on each email. But I do agree you have to, uh, to, to call to action. Another address to this is really uh, be rely more on automated campaigns. This is very important because what we see the engagement rate on automated campaigns is way, way, way high in comparison to just scheduled like bulk email campaigns or email blasts, however you call it. Why is it so? Because all the automated campaigns, uh, they start with a trigger and basically they're being sent out by the system, by the platform. Is it Omnisend? Is it another marketing automation platform? When your customer, your visitor shows the intent of something. So basically the signal comes first and only then the marketing message follows the signal, the signal brought by the customer. Uh, and uh, therefore, it's way more relevant to, to the reader, to the customer, and therefore, it's being way more engaged uh, with the content uh, in comparison to bulk email campaigns. And the, the good news is that uh, the, the, the engagement and the effectiveness is like growing significantly. In 2020, according to our research, here among Omniscient customers, we saw that uh, it was around 30% of uh, conversions were attributed uh, to automated campaigns in comparison to a bit more than 2% of the traffic sent. So only 2% of email sent, automated emails generated 30% of orders for our customer base. So that's, that's another thing. What we still see that a lot of marketers are using just... Uh, if it's e-commerce market is using just a burning card reminder, that's that's more or less the, the only automation. But you can run uh, welcome, you can run post purchase, you can run customer activation, uh, can, like automated campaigns, which which are very effective and very important for you. Really like that. Could you run over that list again? Because I think those with uh, their own websites are going to find that very helpful. The, the automatic campaigns you should have. Yeah, an abandoned cart. That's the yeah, only that's, one. Yeah, yeah it's often yeah, yeah. the only one. What, yeah, so, what are the other ones? So think it's just think about the customer journey. So from welcome campaigns, when you greet your customer, then uh, browse abandonment campaigns before they add anything to the cart, then it's uh, abundant cart campaigns, then it's uh, post-purchase campaigns, then you ask for review, then you ask uh, to uh, evaluate your service, then, then you send this, let's say, invoice or something, which you could be, be added with a little bit of promotional messages as well. So, and then uh, some customer like reactivation and re-engagement campaigns, which again could be like full automated if, you, if your customer has not been purchased, let's say for three months or one month, depending on your um, like average sales cycle. Yeah, so you can start to trigger automated campaign and, and, and invite them to come back. Like it. And by the way, um, I think that again it's tricky when you just mostly focus on selling on amazon or even solely sell on amazon but i do think you could have things like welcome campaigns that will welcome somebody to your brand uh, you can't do an abandoned cart campaign that's off the, the table you certainly can and should be if you're doing it very carefully asking for reviews outside of the amazon ecosphere um and and invoices again that's going to be within the amazon thing so there are certain things i mean customer reactivation and re-engagement if you can capture their emails before you send them on to amazon you've got a chance to nurture that relationship and i think for me that's the reason why i'm really banging the drum of email also um email marketing and off amazon marketing generally for those who sell on amazon that they you don't have to just kind of accept this situation where amazon owns the customer data and that's it if you capture them first and i think this this is great news but for anyone else who's running their shopify sites i think uh welcome campaigns uh abandoned cart the only one most people do is you said review evaluate sending invoice reactivation that's six that I've, i'm counting already 
Um, and as you said, I really like the fact that you flagged that, that data up from your own data that 30% of the conversions attributed to auto campaigns from 2% of the traffic. To your point, and there's a general theme is emerging here that the big numbers don't really matter, do they? Like 100,000 people on your email list, but 70,000 haven't opened an email. You've got an email list that's effectively 30,000 and probably you know, 2% of those are going to be buying the, all your stuff because that's the 80 20 rule, right? It applies to everything. Um, Re relevance is what matters the most, yeah? So by, by, by all means, so uh, relevance of your email list, uh, subscribers list, so you have, you have to uh, have it up to date and you have to have active uh, and engaging uh, subscribers there and the same with messages, yeah? So <laughs> like just the relevance of those messages, automated messages, what drives the effectiveness. Now, yeah, and just yeah, maybe one one another last piece of advice is really uh, augment email with uh, with other channels, text messages, web push notifications. So they are highly effective, and and uh, uh, especially SMS text messages, SMS MMS uh, in, in certain countries, not not like MMS is not uh, available like globally, but in the United States, let's say in Canada, you you can do MMS with a visual content within an SMS through SMS channel with a visual content. So even converting even even better. So, uh, yeah, so that's, that's what I would advise really again, uh, have an omni-channel approach. If you have not started doing it yet, start, start exploring it. And it, it, it's just really uh, highly effective. So basically as where we started, yeah, if Facebook is down, so you have other, other great channels, how you can still reach your customers, it's email, it's text messages. So the more channels you have to communicate with your customers, the more independent from any force majeures you are, the, the better reach you get actually, because your different customers prefer different communication channels. Uh, so the better reach usually leads to a better, uh, better conversions and uh, a better business results. Absolutely. So people talk about multi-channel in e-commerce a lot of the time, but what they mean is multiple sales channel like Shopify and Amazon and Walmart.com, for example. But what they neglect is the multiple marketing channels, the, the thing that you guys especially in, Omni Send being, you know, Omni everywhere, I think, isn't it? The Latin, if I remember my school days. And mm -hmm. uh yeah, I, I think that people overlook that at the power of that, because um, if you, for example, sell on Amazon and you get your Amazon account suspended, but you have an email list of 100,000 really engaged people, you could whack up a Shopify site probably within a week if you use some developer that really knows the business maybe quicker and and be back in business to some degree. I mean, yes, you won't have the open rates, and uh, sorry, the conversion rates that Amazon has. Um, but you can at least get back in business. And I, I do know people that have, have had a situation a little bit like that. Normally, in fact, what they had is an existing Shopify site and they had a big list and then Amazon shut them down for a while for whatever reason. So um, Facebook, by the way, if, you, if you're if you talking about um, marketing channels that are vulnerable, I mean, Facebook itself got shut down yesterday. It's unusual, but Facebook shutting people's advertising accounts or entire Facebook account down happens every day of the week, doesn't it? I mean, they mm -hmm. are super quick. They are worse than Amazon which is saying something to, to really fire quickly and forgive slowly, if ever. So I think it's, it's uh, if you're big on Facebook marketing, then it's just a good reminder that you are always going to be vulnerable <laughs> and get an omni-channel approach. So talking of which, we also talk about what, what you guys at Omnisend do, obviously, as the name implies, multi-channel marketing. What, what other things do you cover apart from email marketing and how do you help e-commerce sellers? Yeah, so we do, we are on the channel marketing automation platform. So basically we help our, our customers who do sell online to, uh, to communicate with their existing customers and to retain their customers by a uh, few things. So uh, first one is really synchronizing data with your online store. So what I have been talking about, like uh, customer behavior, on-site behavior, uh, visiting behavior, it's, it's all the things we're tracking. And based on that, you can automate alongside with sending still bulk campaigns through uh, Omnisend. And you can do it uh, via multiple channels. So it's uh, email, it's text messages, it's uh, web push notifications, and it's synchronization with your Google and Facebook ads accounts in order to run local high audiences or, or retargeting campaigns based on those segments. So it's really, uh, and with Omnisend, Omnisend, it's very, very flat learning curve. So it's so easy to start uh, benefiting and really getting orders. And, uh, and it's quite powerful when you, when you master it and you can do a lot of great things like yeah, I, I really like those uh, softwares and sort of packages and services like you guys that that offer a very integrated system because I think one of the one of the things about life in uh, online is that it's not that hard to start with 
a system like SMS marketing. I mean, I've I've tried, I think, Twilio in the past, and um, it's certainly hard to find somebody like Mailchimp or whatever that does email marketing. But if you get something that's geared to e-commerce is a bit harder, and then you may be looking at Klaviyo. I'm naming all your rivals here now, but the trouble is that. Yes. If things ha operate independently of each other, somebody's got to sweat to integrate those and make sure that when you send out a massive load of traffic to your website via Google ads, that you're actually trying to capture that and that you then have an email campaign in place to nurture those leads. And then where do you send them from then? And then suddenly it becomes a problem of lots of things <laughs> running around automatically doing stuff, um, but that they don't coordinate. It's a bit like putting an orchestra of fine musicians together and then... Mm kind of having no conductor i say this true, because true. i used to conduct orchestras and actually you can get true. a lot of chaos out of really great players if you don't coordinate them so i really like the fact that you guys offer that coordination i think that's really really overlooked um if yeah. i may say so so um, yeah that's that's yeah and you mentioned some some kind of like household names yeah so i understand this like mailchimp just tailored for e-commerce so a lot of specific things and then things which you have rebuilt and yeah, we're similar to Clavio. We just way easier to, as powerful as Clavio, just easier to use. And then we have way better support. So that's what we're famous for really hand holding and helping our customers to, to succeed uh, since the very, very beginning of their business, till, till becoming quite uh, large organizations, like including yeah. Lego or Samsung or Unilever, who are using Omniscient. Excellent. That's very, very cool to hear. I didn't know that Unilever was doing that. But also, um, um yeah the, the great support is really important because that's the other thing that you discover if you use the famous uh you know cheap or free versions of things in my experience it's great until it doesn't work and then you, you send an email and then 48 hours later you get something back from Zendesk <laughs> saying yeah we've acknowledged your your thing and in the meantime you're tearing your hair out because something really important to your business isn't working so that's important so i know you've got a couple of bits of um some resources for us. One of this very excitingly titled OpensAdead.com. Is that your site or is that a, a sort of related site that somebody else runs that you think we should know about? Yeah, OpensAdead is owned by us. It's mm -hmm. a site dedicated to iOS 15 uh, changes. Wow. Uh, yeah, but the, the source is, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but what you said, like open said that, but not email is not. So that's yeah. that's the tagline of that website. So if you want to learn more about uh, everything iOS 15 updates related and how to manage, uh, uh, like how to change open as a primary metric to uh, all other metrics. So that's, that's definitely the source for you. And there are, there are great articles done by us, but there are a lot of great articles and sources done by other industry experts in open that website so it's not promotional at all it's it's built for you to really to help to to, um, to manage the situation which we are currently facing amazing well look this has been very educational for me and i think it's an, a, a good reflection point when strange things happen like facebook gets suspended or ios um, updates mean suddenly your open rates are meaningless and something you've relied on um you know like the sun being there or something suddenly is taken away from you and it forces a mindset rethink and, and it turns out that actually we were focused on something slightly irrelevant anyway by the sound of it in a lot of cases so uh apart from the ability to write a great headline or subject line i should say for your emails i guess you know it's not really going to change that much because in the end if people are clicking through and doing stuff that matters like buying things or at least reading our blog articles or whatever else we want them to do then I guess that in the end, those are the metrics that matter. So uh, kind of alarming yet reassuring episode. So um, we're going to wrap this one up here. And next, we're going to talk about Amazon attribution. But I think there's plenty for us to absorb here. So for now, um, Richis Loris of Omnisend, many, many thanks for coming on the show. Yeah, thanks, Michael, for inviting.